Hello and welcome back to the channel. As always, I'm your host Morgan. I'm going to apologize in advance for a second if I get mauled by a terrier during this video. I don't control her, she just does what she wants. And in case she does pop up here, her name is Annie. But let's get into today's video. So there are six species of reptiles found in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem. Five of those reptiles are snakes. So welcome to Serpent Sunday. Today, we're going to be talking about those snake species that are found in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem. And what is the greater Yellowstone ecosystem, you might ask, since I've now used that term twice? Well, it's basically Yellowstone National Park and the surrounding areas. So Grand Teton National Park and the national forests in the area as well. So we're going to be talking about the snakes that can be found in that ecosystem. It's important to note that the reptiles in this area are not very well studied. Now, the Greater Yellowstone ecosystem is famous worldwide for its variety of mammals and birds, and it's very diverse. Reptiles, not so much. And the reason for this is because of the cooler climate year round. There are just fewer reptiles in general in this ecosystem. As we said a few seconds ago, there are six reptile species total in this ecosystem, five of which are snakes. So let's actually get into these known species and kind of overview what they are. So the first species is this one here, the bull snake, Pituophis catenifer sei. And the bull snake is a subspecies of gopher snake. And we've talked about gopher snakes in length on this channel before. I've done a whole Serpent Sunday just on gopher snakes. But where are they found in this greater Yellowstone ecosystem? Well, they're found at the lower elevations in northern Yellowstone. So that kind of northern area, not super far south. You're not going to get them in Grand Teton National Park. That's much too far south for them. And they are the largest snake species found in Yellowstone. They get up to six feet, about two meters long, and they are non-venomous constrictors. However, they are commonly mistaken for rattlesnakes because they do have similar colorations. The next snake species we're going to talk about is the rubber boa. Charina botei. They are a nocturnal burrowing snake. They are very worm-like in appearance, and they get the name rubber boa because their skin looks kind of rubbery. This is a smaller snake species that only gets up to about two and a half feet long, which is less than a meter in length. And they're usually going to be found in the rocky areas near streams and rivers. And like the gopher snake, Rubber boas are also non-venomous. Rubber boas are also fairly unique in that they're one of the only boa species found in North America, which is pretty cool. The other species being the rosy boa, but they're not found in this ecosystem, so we're not talking about them. They're dead to us right now. Moving right along to species three, we have the common garter snake, Thamnophis sertalis. The particular subspecies we're looking at here is the valley garter snake, Thamnophis sertalis fitchi. And this is classified as a medium snake. They get about three feet or about a meter long. As you can see, they have very brightly colored stripes and red spots. They are quite a flashy snake. And they're usually going to be found around permanent sources of water. So and they're a pretty easy to spot snake if you are in the area. But they used to be quite abundant in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem. However, their populations are now in decline and researchers really don't know why. It's just a big question mark. And like the other species that we have covered, they are non-venomous as well. Which brings us to species number four, another garter snake. In this case, it is the terrestrial garter snake, Thamnophis elgans. And like the other garter snake, we're looking at a specific subspecies when we're talking about what's found in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem. 
The subspecies we're looking at is the wandering garter snake, Thamnophis elgans vagrans. Again, as always, I apologize if I've been doing a bad job pronouncing the Latin names. That is not my strong suit. I am doing my best. And this particular garter snake is the most common reptile found in this ecosystem. They're a fairly small snake. They only get up to about two feet, which is less than a meter in length. They are much more plain looking than the common garter snake, but they still do have stripes as you can see in the image. And similar to the common garter snake, you're gonna find the terrestrial garter snake near sources of water. And the big reason for this is that they feed primarily on amphibians, fish, worms, slugs, snails, and leeches. So all the things that you're gonna find near the water. And as with all the other species we've talked about, they are non-venomous as well. Which brings us to our last snake species, the prairie rattlesnake, Crotalus viridis. And this is the only venomous species of snake found in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem. They get up to about four feet or about a meter-ish in length and they are pretty much found only in the northwestern portion of Yellowstone. They could possibly be elsewhere in the ecosystem, but they've only been actually confirmed in northwestern Yellowstone. Now, when I'm making these distinctions about these species where they're found, we're talking specifically about in this ecosystem. They are found elsewhere, but again, we're just focusing on the greater Yellowstone ecosystem. And in all of the years that Yellowstone National Park has been a thing, there are only two documented bites by the prairie rattlesnake on people. So even though they're a venomous snake, they're not exactly a problem in the park. Rattlesnakes are not a problem in general, in my opinion. They do their part in their ecosystem and they just want to be left alone. Much like me, I usually want to be left alone too. So those are the five species of snake that you're going to find in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem. And one interesting thing, one interesting tidbit, because there are two national parks that make up this ecosystem, Yellowstone, obviously, and Grand Teton just to the south. And Grand Teton National Park is interesting because there are no venomous species of snake that occur in Grand Teton National Park. The only snakes that you're even going to find in Grand Teton are the wandering garter snake, the valley garter snake, and the rubber boa. So three of the five species. Remember, the bull snake in this ecosystem is only really found in the northern parts of Yellowstone, and the rattlesnake is only going to be found in the northwestern parts of Yellowstone. So they're pretty much absent everywhere else in the ecosystem, or at least they're not documented anywhere else in the rest of the ecosystem. So there are no species of venomous snake found within the border of Grand Teton National Park. The prairie rattlesnake, again, they're only found in that northwestern part of Yellowstone, which is, spoiler alert, not part of Grand Teton National Park. I just thought that was really interesting when I was researching the parks and looking into all this. And it does make sense because the greater Yellowstone ecosystem year round does have a much cooler temperature than what I'm accustomed to. I'm from Southern California and there's an abundance of different reptile species. I can go sit in my front yard for 10 minutes and probably see two or three species of lizard. So it does boggle my mind a little bit that we're going to be going somewhere that has six species of reptile. I just think that's kind of cool. Um, have you been there? Have you seen any of these snakes before in their natural environment? Do you have anywhere that you think I should go look? I'm probably not going to see that comment till after we leave Yellowstone, unfortunately, but I'd be interested to know what I missed. So leave that in the comment section down below. I do hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, afternoon, evening, what have you. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you feel so inclined, and I will see you all in the next one.
Thank you again for watching this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell if you would like to see more. And if you'd like to follow me on any of my other social medias, the links are down in the description below. Don't forget to check out thereptilegoth.com for all of my articles and blog posts. If you found any value in this video and you would like to help support the channel, please check out my Patreon page. That link is also in the description down below. And a special thanks goes out to my Diamond Dragon patron, Diane V. What you're doing is really helping me fund a dream here. I will see you guys all in the next one.